you're out on a photo shoot. Whether that is film or digital, it does not matter. Even if you're not getting paid for that shoot, it is really important to back up your files. I'm gonna look right in the camera and say this. Back up your files. Today's video is gonna be talking about how to back up those files, what I do to back up my files. I do a kind of strange little process, but I think it is a really good process for keeping all those things redundantly backed up. And we're gonna talk about redundant storage today in this video, stay tuned for that. Hey team, I am Will Cobb and I am a digital and film photographer out in the California Central Coast. But today I am trapped in this office on vacation. Cheers and you from Georgia, actually. And I'm trapped in my father-in-law's office to get a few videos done so that I can talk to you guys about some of the things that I have encountered on this trip that I was like, you know what? I think a lot of photographers should know this information. And that's why I'm here to help you guys with that. Last week, I talked about cleaning up the gunk off of an old film camera that I brought on this trip. It was really gunked up. You can check the link in, down below or above and see that video that I'm trapped in this office about as well and how to clean that gunk up. Today, we're talking about redundant storage for your digital cameras, but also this can be for your film scan backups as well. So stay tuned for this video that we'll be talking about all of that process that I do. So as a professional photographer, there's nothing more scary than losing someone's shoe that you were on. And for me, I'm actually out on wedding shoots all the time, shooting for eight plus hours, eight plus hours, shooting upwards of 500 gigs at some of these weddings. Now, when I'm doing that, I am shooting tons of cards, more than uh, you would think that I would need on a wedding day. And I'm gonna walk through some of my process on how I maintain that, but also this can translate to the film photographers who are scanning their images or getting the scans back from the lab. We will get to that, stay tuned. This might be redundant to say this, but redundancy is literally copies. It is backing up, it is a second or a third or a fourth different mirrored copy of your data. Redundancy is amazing because it's gonna protect you from your cards crashing, your computers crashing, fires, theft, all sorts of stuff. It will protect you in this way. Let me walk through it. It's important to think of redundancy as a chain. So you are on your shoot. You have your digital camera with you. You are shooting away. And again, film photographers, hold on. If you wanna be a professional, you need to get a camera with two card slots B because if one of your cards fail, and they will fail, all cards will fail at some point, no matter what they are, when they fail, they will not fail at the same time, and your redundancy will save one of your cards from failing or corrupting. It might not even fail, it might just corrupt and have a bad file on it, which is also possible. These cameras are smart, but they are not that smart. So having two cards in there, will save your butt. This has happened more than one occasion for me. I have had uh, cards fail on me. I've had my camera black out on me during a over 30 minute shoot for video. And I have had some data not go all the way on a camera and have a file corrupted. I've had all three of those happen to me, um, partly from buying cheap cards and partly from just circumstance and in the moment problems. So we need to have that redundancy in the camera. So buying cameras with two card slots is important. Another thing that's important is buying trusted cards. I'm gonna talk a lot about this for a second because this really matters. I have had fake cards from Amazon that I purchased and those cards I sent right back and reported to Amazon that they were fake. How did I know they were fake? Uh, they didn't work, right? That's for one. And the second is I did some research and the little notch was yellow when um, the SanDisk's ones are gray. And that was a weird thing. So you definitely wanna buy trusted cards. I definitely recommend not buying your cards on Amazon. Definitely go to B&H or Andromeda or a trusted camera store to you 
and buying your cards from there. So I will put some Amazon links just for your reference of what cards I am talking about in this video. Please do not buy those. Please buy from those other sources. I don't have affiliate links for those. Any links down below are affiliate links and I do make a commission from them, but I'm telling you right now, do not buy the cards down there on the Amazon link. It is a reference, and I will say this right next to it, to go to the other places. So I started out using these Sandus Extreme Plus and the Extreme cards, and then I recently got a bunch of the Extreme Pros, and uh, I have the 128 gigabytes. I shoot a lot of video, so I need really big cards. It's nice to have that headroom, that space, in case you are getting close to filling up a card. The Extreme Pros, I believe, are the highest card you can get before upgrading to the UHS-2 cards. The UHS-1 is pretty great. These are the V30s. Anyways, they work really well. Uh, they can shoot 4K video. Um, they handle my cameras, no problem. And if you wanna bump up to the next level, it's a lot more expensive. I think I got these for like 40 bucks. It might be different down in the link below, but um, yeah, you can buy these for 40 bucks. They're a little cheaper for the 64s. And so starting with a good card SanDisk, I trust a lot. They have never really let me down. They let me down from other circumstances, but they have like a lot of guarantees on the back end that they will not fail. And because of my redundancies, I never had to access that uh, fail safe that they have put in to their company. I've never had to call them for any reason because I have redundancies on my own stuff and I never had that problem at all. And I have tossed some cards and actually they weren't from them. I had some even cheaper cards when I started out. Just don't go cheap. Just buy a good card or two or four uh, when you start out. So we've got our redundancy. We've shot two cards out of our camera. Oh, and this is a nifty little case I've got. This is on Amazon, uh, just a cheap little $15 case uh, that holds a bunch of cards, holds micro SD too for my drone and all that. It's pretty great. Definitely check it out. So we have our two cards here. This is our redundant storage. Both cards have exactly the same photos and footage on them. So when I get home from a shoot is when I bring them to the computer. And what I do is immediately upload them to redundant hard drives. On this trip, I only brought one with me because on a trip, I do not delete the cards. So what I do is I do not delete my two cards. I back it up to my hard drive and I have three redundant copies. When I go home, I can then back this up to a second hard drive and I feel comfortable deleting these two. Another thing I can do is save it to my computer and save it to here, and that would be two copies, redundant, and then I can clear my cards. I've only had to do that a couple times. I don't like doing that. I don't like clearing cards until I am for sure done with the project, or I absolutely have to because I don't have any more cards left. I am crazy with this redundant backup because you don't wanna lose someone's gig. People are paying you thousands of dollars to be there on a shoot. Your responsibility as a professional photographer uh, or professional videographer is to not lose their stuff. So I use a MacBook Pro right now. I specifically bought a MacBook Pro with two terabytes of storage on it. And that is to have a few weddings, um, somewhere around three or four weddings that I'm working on uh, that will I can work on at the same time. And it's all on the computer. Some people work off of the solid state hard drives and that's because they're fast. Um, I just went with a bigger computer so I didn't have to have a dongle for that. And some people like to back up to the solid state drives. That is definitely an opinion that will go a lot faster. They will, uh, it's solid state, so a little bit more durable and uh, no moving parts. So that's great too. They are a lot more expensive. I'll link one down below. That is the Samsung, that is the Samsung T5, I believe it is. And that's a great one that a lot of people use. I actually will be using those eventually when I upgrade maybe one day to a Blackmagic or some other systems that I've been thinking about. But uh, right now I actually use um, regular old hard drives, but these are actually four terabyte hard drives. And that seems like a lot, but I shoot video. So uh, I actually have a ton of these at home. And what I do with these is I have redundant copies. When I upload my footage to my computer, 
I will upload them. I'll plug in both hard drives at the same time into my computer and drag all the videos from the card to one and all the videos to this one with the exact same name, the exact same place, and they are copied perfectly on each hard drive. And when I go on a trip, I only bring one with me because I will try to keep the cards from deleting. And I label them all with what I do on my computer, label them all. So this one's a green one, I've got that. So this is the Toshiba just portable storage. I'll link this one down below. This is a new one for me. Um, I used uh, in the past, I have a big stack of the WD um, My Passport drives back home all in redundant pairs of colored coated uh, white, blue, green, and black. And uh, I've got just a big fat stack of those back home um, with tons of weddings on them that I am not ready to delete yet. And yeah, so I've got these now I actually. So this is my fifth set of redundant ones. Another way to do this is to actually have redundant NAS storage or one of the server storage things. Not talking about that in this video. This is how I do it right now. This is one of the cheapest options. You can get a pair of these for, you know, 80 bucks each and it's not that big a deal to have these when those NAS server things can run a thousand dollars or more without any hard drives in them and you have to buy these $250 hard drives or more. Uh, and those are really great and they are cost effective to a point I'm getting close to that point, but for a lot of you guys out there, you don't need that. Actually, you could probably get by with just a pair of these, especially you film photographers. So obviously film photographers, you can cut out the SD card part and just take it from your computer and back it up when you're done editing them onto your redundant copies. If you wanna get a little crazier, after you've uploaded your information to your redundant backups, you can store these in different places. Uh, I, I'm not doing that at this moment, but it is a smart thing to do. Maybe keep one in a fire safe box in your house and you can either keep the other one in your car that's with you all the time, or you can mail it away. If again, this is a more crazy option, but you can mail it away and every month get it mailed back to you from a friend across the country or something like that. Um, or my dad is cross country, so I haven't done it with him, but uh, I'm thinking about it. So. Just keeping these elsewhere from your house because if your house burns down or flood or anything like that, you will have one stored somewhere else. And that is really important. So redundancy is so important. I am all about redundancy. It is very important to me. It's very, it should be very important to you if you wanna be professional or if you wanna just back your stuff up all the time. It is, it's really important. Have I said how important it is yet? I don't know, maybe I've said it too many times. So last but not least on how I back up all my stuff is please, please, please back up your stuff. <laughs> I know I've said that a million times in this video, but not just your photos, back up everything, your personal stuff, your financial stuff, back it up onto hard drives. I, it really, it hurts me so much when someone says that they have lost all their information. I just, I, I, really want people to back their stuff up. It's not expensive. And why I recommend this physical medium is because it is your control. You know, no company is gonna change on you. You don't have to pay a monthly subscription where that it, it will run out. Uh, you also have way more storage. Uh, if I tried to store what, I have like 12 terabytes or more right now. If I tried to store that on Google or Amazon or wherever, uh, it would be a lot of money. Uh, and I just, I don't have that. So physical storage, it's way better. So I hope this video was able to help you guys understand my storage backups and uh, that you should definitely be doing something like this uh, in your personal photography or in your professional photography. I can't stress it enough that you need to be doing something like this and researching ways to make this a part of your setup. And again, I hope this helped you. And if you have any questions on any of this stuff, I'll link some stuff below uh, and I will make notes on stuff you should not buy on Amazon or you should buy on Amazon. I bought this on the, I bought the hard drive on Amazon. Definitely reach out for any questions, any suggestions you have for our other viewers as well. Uh, if you've got a fun, redundant backup system, write that down in the comments to help the other people that watch this channel about 
great redundant backup solutions. I really appreciate you guys watching and I know this wasn't too much about film, but I do do this for my film photography. So I hope this is able to help you guys in your film photography journey as well. Guys, there is one more video coming out in this uh, little room right here. So I apologize for the poor lighting scenario, but stay tuned for that one. I'm gonna be diving into the Film Lab app um, which is a film conversion software. I'm gonna be talking about that next week. I really dig that software. I just tried it out. I'm not sponsored by them at all. And I, uh, I actually really digged it. It was a really good process, but I have one problem with it that I haven't been able to figure out. And I'll talk about that next week. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe to this channel if you are interested in all these things, film, developing, scanning, digital workflow, all these things. I'm here to help you guys. Hit me up on Instagram, hit me up in the comments. I answer everything, I look at everything, and I just really appreciate you guys watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.